Hey group. Uh, so this whole lesson is about cell organelles. And if you don't know what an organelle is, it's kind of like a mini organ. So the way that we have a stomach and a brain and all these different organs that help us live, cells, which are crazy important for biology, okay, they, they make up everything that is living, um, they have their own little organs called organelles inside them, which do actually some uh, similar jobs that our organs do. So the goal of this video is I'm gonna give you a little crash course on the nine organelles that I think are the most important that help a cell survive and ultimately help us survive and do everything we need to do. Here we go. We'll start with the nucleus. Start with this because I think this is the most important. The nucleus is right here in the center. This little, actually the whole thing here is the nucleus. It's pointing to the nucleolus. You don't have to worry about that, but this is your nucleus, okay? Um, it's the boss of the cell. Okay, it gives the cell directions for whatever it needs to do, all the different things it has to do. It's like, it's like the cell's brain, if you think of it like that. Specifically, detailed, it contains the DNA. And the DNA is the code that tells the cell what to do. It's the directions. So that's where the DNA lives inside of the nucleus. General control center of the cell detail okay. contains DNA, Sorry. which are the direction ribosomes. Next. All right. We have ribosomes. Ribosomes are... They partner up a lot with the DNA, so that's why I included them next. So the ribosomes, it's hard to see from this little picture here, but you can see it more on the Quizlet, is all these little dots. There's little dots all over the place that are sprinkled throughout the endoplasm reticulum and the cytoplasm, and their main job is they make protein. Now, I wanna make sure that you know what I mean by protein. So uh, protein basically makes everything we need. It makes our hair the color it is, the eye the color it is, it makes our skin um, the way it is, it, it makes our muscles as strong as they are. It, it, protein basically makes us. It, you know, so ribosomes are the factories that make us, if that helps, okay? Um, and they partner up with DNA because that's how they know what to make. And we'll so get more into this, but essentially, DNA comes, sends a little messenger, and tells the ribosome, hey, we need to make this protein. So that's why um, I included it right after the nucleus because that's where the DNA lives. Um, and there's something called amino acids. That's technically what ribosomes make. They make a little amino acid, an amino acid, and they make all these little amino acids. Um, like if you think of like Legos, they little make little Legos and together they make a protein. So sum it all up, ribosomes make protein. Technically they make a whole bunch of amino acids that they get directions from the DNA and that ultimately decides what protein they make. Next we have cell membrane, okay? Goes around the cell, that's the main thing. This is what surrounds the cell and its main job besides simply surrounding it, is it protects it from outside of stuff and it, it decides what comes in and what goes out. You see the word permeable? That means that some things can go through it and some can't. It decides. The good stuff comes in, bad stuff goes out. It's like a little protective area around the cell. Then we have something called a vacuole. Um, this is larger in plant cells, but they are still in animal cells that we are studying. And a vacuole is like a storage tank. Um, so I'll show you. Okay, this is actually a plant cell, so I'll show you this, but it's like a big old section that holds water or salts or food or, or anything that the cell needs. Um, it's like our refrigerator that we have in our house, okay? It just stores everything it needs until the cell needs it. Cytoplasm. I said this word earlier. This is like jelly-like goopy stuff um, <clears throat> that surrounds everything else. So all the organelles here are surrounded in cytoplasm. So if you think of it like this, if you have like a big plate of like pudding and you put all the little M&Ms and stuff in it, the M&Ms and the sprinkles, they would be your organelles and the pudding would be the cytoplasm that surrounds all the organelles and protects it and, and keeps it safe from, you know, bouncing into the walls and escaping and things like that. So it's basically the jelly-like stuff that surrounds and supports all the organelles. Then there's a lysosome. So lysosome, the way I always remember lysosome is um, like Lysol, like cleaner, like cleaner Lysol. So lysosomes do a very similar job. So these little kind of circular things, okay? Um, they have a handful of jobs, but the main thing they do <clears throat> is they clean up the cell. So when the cell has waste products it needs in, uh, or doesn't need anymore inside it, the lysosomes basically take it and digest it and get rid of it. So that's their job. They clean up the um, the uh, the stuff inside the cell and even the whole cell itself in case the cell dies. They're the cleanup crew. All right, next we have Golgi bodies. You'll sometimes call them Golgi apparatuses. You even saw Golgi complex. Golgi is after um, some guy. I forget who he was, but famous guy. Um, the Golgi apparatus or Golgi bodies, they're like your post office inside of a cell. If you think of cell like a city. Their job here, little green guys, okay, is they transport around the cytoplasm and they drive around and drop off this and drop off that and drop off that. Um, they drop off whatever materials are needed inside the cell or even take things out of the cell. 
proteins, sugars, things like that. And then the mitochondria, really you say mitochondria, but as a kid I always remember the mitochondria because it's like the powerhouse. And a lot of people remember the mitochondria as the powerhouse, the cell, but I want you to understand what the heck that means. What's a powerhouse? Um, so mitochondria looks like this, okay, inside of a cell. Their job, the powerhouse, they make energy for the cell, then ultimately energy for us. Okay, that's their job. And what they do, the magic formula for energy is they take oxygen that we breathe in, they take food that we eat, and they take the oxygen and the food, technically the, the glucose from the food, and it makes energy. And there we go, simple as that. So that's their job. Their job is to make energy so the cell and we can survive. <clears throat> and last but not least is the endoplasmic reticulum, the longest sounding word that we have. Uh, there's a smooth one, a rough one. For now, we're just gonna call it the endoplasmic reticulum. You don't need to differentiate between the two. Okay, it's this little squiggly thing. Now here's what's tricky. It looks a whole lot like the Golgi bodies. Those Golgi bodies, they're the endoplasmic reticulum. The main difference here is that your endoplasmic reticulum, man, it's hard to even say, is connected basically to the nucleus, and it's kind of like a conveyor belt for transporting materials on it. So the difference between the Golgi body and the endoplasmic is the Golgi body kind of goes around and delivers stuff. The endoplasmic pretty much stays right where it is. And it just, it's almost like a conveyor belt and things kind of stay on it, specifically ribosomes. So you'll see, I guess you can't see it from this picture. <clears throat> you'll see from another one, some have ribosomes attached to it. That's the rough endoplasmic and some don't have ribosomes. Um, that's the difference, there's a rough and a smooth. <clears throat> but um, that, uh, that's the main job. It just transports some of the material throughout the cell. Okay, that was your crash course. There's definitely a whole lot of other parts that we haven't talked about in the cell, and I imagine um, you'll see them in some other videos or diagrams or websites, or you'll definitely see them in high school. But for now, I want, to make, I want you to really get comfortable with these nine. So um, make sure you can look at a picture, identify what it is, make sure you can generally say, hey, that just transports material, and make sure also you're comfortable with getting to some of the details about what it does. And, uh, and those